This is the build OGM call for Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. Uh, Pete kindly created an agenda in HackMD. Uh, I'll put the link here. Um, I feel a little bit um, embarrassed or self-conscious that maybe about uh, Sometimes I create the agenda and uh, it's so that other people can populate it. This time I created the agenda. So because there were a bunch of things that I thought would be useful for OGM to talk about, but they're, um, I'm, I'm coming in with them, so. Sounds great. And it, I think they're a fine place to start. I looked at them and I added an item at the end in case we have time left. I saw. Um, and uh, let me, um, I'll share my screen and uh, show off that agenda or cool. set of topics really. I, 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 wanted, uh, I wanted the folks on the call to kind of talk through the different topics and then make the actual agenda. So, um, or, you know, just agree the to talk item about the, things. Which is the second item on the set of topics. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Um, uh, I will keep sharing this. Uh, yeah, but I, I will keep sharing this, but let's, uh, let me know if, um, if we'd rather see faces than um, pixels. Cool. Um, Anne, are you comfortable with the HackMD and the split screen display that, that's showing and all that kind of stuff? And different. Sounds great. Hey, Phil. Hey, Jerry. How's it going? Hi, everyone. Good. Thank you. Um, good. Then, um, shall we do a little check-in? Yeah. Actually, so we've got enough people here that maybe I'll drop this, or, or maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> Hey, Klaus. Hi. Oh, good. We were just kind of starting check-ins. Yeah. Um, I'll just, by, by way of checking in, I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in. Um, I'm in kind of a strange place where part of me is sort of frustrated for the way things are going and my own slowness on some stuff and, and so forth. And then part of me is really excited because Every, every important conversation I have around these topics seems to crystallize the ideas better and manifest them better. And I'm looking forward more and more to where this is all going. So, so there we go. Um, I'll go maybe. Uh, so I'm, I'm super energized, lots of good stuff happening. Uh, uh, Anne and I have been uh, working on the food sovereign some and uh, feel super productive. I've got other other people I'm working with on other things. Everything is going well. So that's the good news. Um, bad news is uh, Jerry and I were in a meeting yesterday with one of our, um, uh, one of the people who works on climate. And he said, so new paper out. Uh, I've been reviewing it for two or three or four days, something like that. And uh, I can't make it not make sense. And uh, this guy says uh, we're inevitably headed to 3.5 degrees. Um, like you, he could not figure out a way around it. Um, so that was really sobering news, um, really. Uh, unhappy news. And then, of course, um, uh, I've been watching Delta kind of go from, you know, something that we weren't worrying about at all to something that we're starting to understand how bad it is, except that I'm about two or three or four weeks ahead of in the information curve. And every day, pretty much, I'm seeing stuff about Delta being super, super, super scary. And then watching the rest of the country going, it's very gently starting to wake up and go, oh, it's maybe we should something, something we should worry about. So um, it's a weird time to, to watch a, yet another train wreck uh, in motion, um, and just scary and unhappy and things like that. So, um, so right into that, um, I think I'm, I, I don't want to do this. And yet I think I, I must, um, I'm thinking about convening a one hour weekly call, at least for an, until the peaks starts to 
subside about just processing all the you know anecdotes and science and stuff like that 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 we should that more people shouldn't know about to, to try to speed that uh, process up um that sounds like a great idea pete and would you also like to strategize about possible ways of upping the vaccine rate or is this mostly a tracking and understanding kind of call you're proposing um it's a really good question i'm, I'm going to drop the share because i think enophysists are, are in that um uh it's a really good question i i i it's funny i don't want to spend the time on it and um and so and so when I think about that call, it's like, how can I make it the shortest, most effective, most, you know, because it's like, okay, so what the, the call I really want is just kind of what happens in Corona Wisdom in the, in the channel in Mattermost. It's like, and, and also maybe emergent, uh, emergent event sense making. Let's do some, you know, uh, let's go around the room. Let's talk about the three things that I've read today that I, I've heard about that are super important. Are we, are we all on the same page? Do we know about those things? You know, and I would pick up two or three things from some somebody else and let's make a wiki or, or a set of Google Docs or whatever. And poof, we're done with the call. So around that call is a whole nother set of things, right? How can we get more vac vaccination happening? How can we get more, how can we get more vaccination around the world happening? Um, you know, what do I do about my kids? What do I do about my workplace? What do I do about, you know, disinformation? Yada, 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 right? We could be, I could, I, each of us could probably spend 50 hours a week trying to solve just that, right? And it's not what I want to do. I want to do like, a, you know, at most for me, an hour call. Um, how do you, how do you deal with the fact, how do you have the how do you deal with the psychological fact that you're, you're in trauma, everyone else is in trauma and together we're, you know, need to move forward. You know, that's another hour call at least, right? Every week. Anyway. Well, it doesn't need to be a repeating call. I mean, Fair enough. The, yeah. I mean, basically, not to oversimplify, but dealing with trauma and dealing with stress are both, they start with self-awareness and other awareness. And those are not hard concepts to understand. They may be hard concepts to learn and practice but in each circumstance, I mean, I've been trying to do this actively with groups ever since COVID started a year and a half ago. And it ends up taking some time from the standpoint that one-on-one -on -one it's sort of, how are you doing? And then you patiently listen to how they're doing. And then you acknowledge and reinforce, well, it sounds like you're having a really tough time. <laughs> and then my husband's words of wisdom as a psychiatrist after a certain amount of what he would call perseverating, which he attributed to me at times, um, <laughs> he would say, well, that sounds really complicated. <clears throat> I'm sure, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure when you're ready to do something about it, you'll know what you want to do, which was enabling and settling and implied we had some power and so forth. And I don't mean to be prescriptive, but I think we can't collectively solve the problem. We could collectively identify ways to reach out to people or to um, begin a blog or something else that is a source of information that we feel is more reliable or more balanced than what we're able to see. Or maybe we just wanna to refer to a lot of other reliable sites, not that everyone would go there, but there's a lot of good sites <laughs> on COVID Yep. My foster home here in Minnesota has a really good one called SIDRAP. Um, it's pretty SIDRAP easy. SIDRAP is very find. great. Yeah. And so I, my, my question yeah. is how can I spend 30 or 60 minutes a week uh, for the next month um, and not talk about emotional trauma and not talk about uh, public education even? Just like for, for me, right? I'm doing a lot of sense making and my wife is doing a lot of sense making around here is the emerging information that is going to be that people will understand is important in a month, right? How can we make a list of that, process it, get other people in the same kind of boat, you know, just I, so I'm for, for this particular effort, I'm really at the very front end of friends, sense making, right? And, and that's the only work I want to do on it um, publicly, kind of. Obviously, I do a lot privately and with friends and family and stuff like that. But so 
but, but then there's a lot a lot more there's like a cone of work to do right and 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 then of course looking at klaus's face um this is in a microcosm the the training sprints we have for you know the the thing the the slower but bigger train wreck of of climate and food and things like that you know so um judy would you like to check in <laughs> well i kind of did um it's been a little bit of a chaotic week with some ups and downs of medical tests and other things but i think things are steadying out so that's good and Thanks. right now I'm trying to figure out how to get my Apple Pencil to work so I can sign something that needs to be in Missouri that I sent with an error number in it. <laughs> so th that's from the sublime to the ridiculous. Thanks. Let me know if I can help, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to go next? I'll just say that, um, you know, most of the people that we talk with the trauma that they have around COVID is about COVID, but I'm actually seeing people who are traumatized, the more conspiratorial minded people, and what they're traumatized of is this idea that once you mandate a vaccine, you've created a framework for always keeping the control over people. And I'm just trying to help these conspiratorial minds to think, well, maybe that was the point of the disinformation because if you just got the vaccine, we wouldn't have to mandate anything. And to what I think it was Charlotte, the woman, I, I don't, the woman that spoke, that was uncomfortable talking about the dangers of the vaccine, curly hair, nobody. You don't remember she was on, she was saying she was uncomfortable talking in the oh, group. Oh yeah, 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 Grace. Grace, okay. Um, to her point, you know, I've had people who I've seen them say, well, there's been this many thousand deaths from the vaccine. And what I've done is I said, rather than argue, which you can argue that number, that number's crazy, but I didn't want to waste my time doing it. But I did the, I did the math for them and it comes out to 0.0089%. And I just put that there and not that that's going to sway them, but at least it's there for somebody else reading it, not that particular person but the other people. So I think she had a point in terms of addressing things that even if we think they're bullshit, they kind of have to be addressed. There were some really good articles over the weekend about, about this, about where we're treating people who aren't vaccinated wrong. Um, Phil Clausen. Yeah, um, things were going pretty well. We had some interesting meetings uh, last week with the um, with, with actually a, a future scene within Lego, um, and then the International Civil Society Center um, as well. So that was exciting. Um, I am, I guess, as everyone's saying, I, I am starting to encounter a lot more pushback from people generally around the vaccine, around, um, and a lot more kind of conspiracy focused information sharing in my circles, which is concerning, I find. Um, I ran into uh, a family friend the other day at a sporting, like we, we I coach a, a men's soccer team and he was saying, oh, none of you, none of you guys, everyone's nearly like around thirties, early thirties, late twenties. Like none of you young people should have got vaccinated. Like I've had kids. I, I know that I don't, I'm not going to have any more kids, but how do you guys know if you can still have kids? And it's just like, people are talking about it after the game. And it's, it's just weird how it kind of spirals out into this kind of, doubt in people's minds just that one interaction i don't know it was it's a bit concerning i'm also i'm moving to london in two weeks and the us put up a stage four kind of warning for travel to london last week which is concerning um but yeah, yeah. that's that's my kind of covid related reality <laughs> wow is the left side of your computer working properly now no i have to bring it in on friday yes yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I sent my computer into apple to get it fixed and they changed the battery and broke two of my ports. Uh, oh, perfect. So that was a kind of unfair trade-off, but yeah. <laughs> that would explain that. Thanks. Right. Klaus? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to not focus too much attention on COVID. You know, it's, it's um, um, I mean, it's a huge distraction because the, it's basically a political, has become unfortunately a political issue and it will, it will run its course, but, it, it sucks up all the oxygen from other conversations that, that we really need to have. Um, 
I was on a call earlier this morning <clears throat> with uh, a European group, uh, a guy from the Netherlands who has set up a company uh, or an, in, an, an effort to build uh, agroforestry systems and to work with very small scale uh, 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 people to set up gardens and grow trees and so on. And, he invited his alumni from uh, uh, the Amsterdam University. So there were people in from all over the world. Um, I mean, not huge, but 20 some people. And he was soliciting support you know, for, for his efforts. And over the last, he described how he spent you know, 10 years to get to the point where he's at. And um, he has you know, created a very nice, uh, platform, but it's minuscule in, in comparison. So I'm thinking if this guy had had you know, a knowledge base to draw from that shows him how to set up his, his organization, which he had to figure out on his own, so he can solicit grant money, you know, so he can provide an, an organizational structure, man, he, he could be in a completely different place today. You know, so we, we, we get confirmation and reaffirmation really the, the, that, that we're on the right track, uh, setting up this platform you know, and, and letting it uh, evolve. Um, so you know, good news is we have a, a commitment from Trisha. So we have a Costa Rica case study, um, which uh, Trisha is totally excited about this. And, and she's like a perfect uh, case study because it's subsistence small scale farmers who uh, are struggling uh, to first of all figure out how to farm more efficiently and then have like zero access to the markets. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow with uh, Christina from Greece. She is totally on fire. You know, that's uh, uh, scary. <laughs> but um, um, she, she's just definitely in. And then we haven't heard back from Kerry yet. Uh, so we may have to find someone else uh, in, the, in the US or he, uh, preferably. I guess in California. So yeah, I think uh, um, it, it actually we can't run fast enough to keep up with this. You know, it it, it is you know, it is really uh, 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 starting to resonate. Uh, so my focus is totally on you know, how can we uh, set up this structure and communication systems and everything to uh, uh, to, to capitalize on the momentum that uh, it has created. Um, um. Sure, uh, I'll just uh, echo the work Klaus has just referred to since I am partnering with him on that. So just ditto on that front. Um, but setting COVID aside, I think for me, I have a, a going into high schooler, I have a, a child going into high school, and I have a child starting middle school this year. And I, I could have picked my battles. I could have picked education or I could have picked food security. I picked food security, but I am already seeing things that make me worry, not just for like COVID, but like for the longevity of my kids' education um, and their ability to learn, their ability to be in diverse environments, to be exposed. Um, and my kids are well-to-do and they have access and I'll fight for them, but not every family is gonna be able to do that. So I'm worried we are about to be on track to have a generation of kids who don't have the foundations to be good human citizens. Um, so COVID aside, and in my mind, COVID's here to stay. I heard an, an, a podcast three months ago or two months ago, this will not be solved in a gener for our generation. So to me, problems for my kids go for the next 20 years um, because of the foundation that's happening right now. So that's what's top of mind for me, but I'm super excited about the work Klaus is doing. So that's balancing out my anxiety with my optimism. So thank you, Klaus, for giving me some optimism. <laughs> uh, thank you all. Uh, Pete, do you wanna pick up and should we all start the agenda and uh... Uh, yes. Um, uh, let me share again. Yeah, COVID is not like smallpox. It's not on a path to eradication. It's definitely becoming endemic and we're gonna have to figure out what to do. And, and if that means taking an annual booster and then suffering through the people who are overloading the system and that's the worst of it, okay. But it could get far freakier than that. Um, the, that's the it, likelihood of what's gonna happen. They're gonna keep modifying it with boosters and you'll get an, another injection. But there's a lot of crazies out there purporting that, you know, because it's mRNA, it's gonna affect whether or not you can have kids and all kinds of other scare tactics that are just total garbage. 
because mm -hmm. messenger RNA is just that. It's a messenger. It doesn't alter your genes. Um, so there's just a lot of craziness out there, and I don't know how to systematically debunk that except direct people to sites that are not bunk. <laughs> And, and, I'll, and I'll say to that, I mean, this generation of kids that I'll call it the 30 under, so the 20 year olds, the teenagers, they don't want to have kids. They're like, it's not worth it. You know, so it's like, even if they convince themselves it's secure and safe, I think there's a lot of other reasons why we're going to see a population decline. Um, which, so, is its, which is its own good conversation. Um, go yeah. Ahead. yeah, I'll I, stop. I, uh, I love how I, I blew up our agenda. Uh, I, I was the one who blew up the agenda um, with COVID. The, and then I, I have to, to finish the, finish it. Um, the reason I'm worried about Delta is because the U.S. is woefully underprepared to meet the challenge of Delta. Um, it moves fast. It's it, We think we got used to wild type variant. So we're used to the signs and symptoms and, and sequelae from uh, wild type. So we got that baked in or not. Delta is a different animal. It works differently. It moves faster. It, it has different effects. I'm worried about 100,000, 200,000, uh, 500,000 people in the U.S. and around the world, uh, more of them, uh, having uh, neurological problems for the rest of their life. Uh, reduced IQ, you know, um, uh, uh, psychological disorder, all that kind of stuff. It's just like you know, so there's there's a way kind of around. Uh, you know, we could we could reduce some of that, or we could lean in and make it worse, right? And we're on the lean in and make it worse thing right now. And it's like, why do we need people who do, already don't want to get vaccinated to have a lower IQ because they got COVID and long COVID and things like that? And it's like, oh my god. Um, uh, uh, you've opened you've opened the Pandora's box again. Go ahead, Plum. You you started it, Pete. It wasn't me. <laughs> but you know, historically, viruses are teachers, right? It's a it's a, it's nature sending out a teacher. If you look at it this way, um, look at the cholera epidemic, the Black Plague. I mean, look at all of these uh, uh, amazing uh, viruses, you know, that have hit populations and. In the process, we had to clean up our sewage systems, right? Because cholera came out of it. And so each time that a virus comes, it is, it is a response to, a, to, to um, uh, the damaging behavior, behavior that damages you know, the, the natural systems. And that's basically how I look at, at uh, uh, this virus. If this virus hadn't shown up, Donald Trump would still be in office. Uh, so, so the these, these, are, these are really horribly traumatic and, and painful teaching moments, but uh, you know, cholera wiped out one third of the European population when it was running through. You know, the Black Plague wiped out one third of the, of the European population and then similar things happened in China and everywhere else. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to, I, you know, there's, so the, the larger thing I take away from COVID is that we learned a lot about the way information works and how we, how we together as a society learn things and things like that. So the overall thing for me for, for COVID is I'm glad we had an easy one to, to uh, give us, um, to help us figure out how people like us actually, um, and other people like us, how do we manage, you know, the longer term, the, the same kind of train wreck in, in the longer term of climate change and food challenges and things like that. So I, I totally agree. It's a good teacher. Um, uh, uh, that, that doesn't mean that the lesson is pleasant. <laughs> um, uh, I, by the way, I, I, I don't, I, I, the other interesting thing is within my family, um, I've got family who are on the other side of the, and in a, in a spectrum, right, on the other side of the whole vaccine thing, right? So um, just the personal trauma of wondering whether or not, how much you care about whether or not your, you know, your close family dies or not, you know, it's like, well, do I go, I'm really sad and I wish that didn't happen? Or do I go, well, you know, do I kind of like Zen go, okay, well, I guess they, they knew what they were up against and I don't know, right? So anyway. Um, it comes back Pete, to the sort of self-awareness, self-care, other care. And, and every person's gonna have a different formula. Yeah. And there are people where you'd like to do other care and they absolutely won't accept it. Yeah. And then it becomes a self-care issue for me 
to accept that they won't accept it. And I don't mean COVID per se, it can be any variety of self-damaging behaviors or relationships or other things. Um, and out to energy systems and food systems and climate systems. And it's, yeah. it's been a wonderful learning uh, year or, or two. Um, I wanted to talk, yeah? I, my last word would just be that, that historically some percentage of the population survives even with long-term consequences yet unknown from something like COVID and they end up wiser because of the experience and they do make the world a better place. And maybe in that time, they'll work on these other big problems, which clearly need working on. Nobody's saying those problems are going away. They're not gonna run a cycle and finish. So yep. Yep. That's, I don't know. I'm trying to be a little bit uh, mellow about the whole thing because yeah. Spinning my wheels at things I cannot influence is a sure way to end up with chronic anxiety and other mental and physical ailments myself. <laughs> There's a, um, and speaking of COVID or food systems or climate systems, um, there's a, there's a, uh, a continuum that we're all, all are all exploring about how do I do self-care and pull away from intervening? And how do I lean into intervening enough so that I'm making change where I can and and yet not, you know, damaging myself and my family and, and things like that. So um, that's right. You got it, Pete. Uh, so how long do we have on this call? Another half hour or another yeah, hour? Another, another half hour. We've, moved, we've shifted these to be a one hour call. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out with this was just in setting up this um, these potential topics, um, I, I had an interesting choice on these. Uh, so, and it was around precision, right? Do I say, I, I can guess how long these things are gonna take. Do I want to pick a precise number here, but maybe too little or too big? <clears throat> or do I wanna pick a range? Um, <clears throat> I've gotten pretty good at, at doing for smaller meetings. This is a little bit bigger than I can predict, but I've gotten pretty good at at writing a pretty precise number here. But then as the, the meeting gets bigger and maybe a little less organized, um, you have to like increase this window. So that for me also goes out to um, task management and project management and things like that. Um, so let me hit these real quick and maybe we can talk about what we'll talk about for the next half hour. Um, uh, uh, in talking with Anne about the food sovereign, um, and let me stop myself there and uh, note that um, I heard from uh, somebody in the network that sovereign is a sensitive word for um, for indigenous folks uh, because it was the sovereign nations that came and um, and uh, colonized them. Uh, massacre them and things like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, this was last night, uh, the word that I've come up with to replace sovereign and the way that we use it is independent actually. So I think I'll, I'll switch to be in uh, independence. Like independence just by itself or independent uh, entities? Independent. Um, yeah, yeah but in an independent S. entities or just independence? Just independence. Um, okay. As a noun, independent as a yes. noun. Yes. I know, but that could mean an independent individual to me, not an entity. So I'm just another, to... another interesting meta topic is we, we've talked a lot about languaging and metaphors and things like that. Um, one of my observations is you don't have to, you don't have to worry too much about expanding out the, the accuracy of the metaphor. At some point, if you're doing a good job of memeing, um, you pick a word and then you explain what it means over and over and over and you essentially colonized to use another bad word um, okay. you uh you you uh ca capture another bad word um uh, you take over the meaning of of that word right so at some point i mean the way we use sovereign isn't the way most of the world uses sovereign you know so the way that we use the word independent and it has a you know a, a halo of meaning around it ends up you know or whatever word quilt or whatever, right? You take a word, you say, okay, I'm going to, to change this a little bit. And this is what it means for, for me. And then hopefully that, that meme grows and expands. And so I, I, 
we worry a lot about whether or not we're picking the right word. I think we could worry a little bit less and worry more about, you know, how we explain what we mean about it to the rest of the rest of the world. Um, so, um, so in conversation with Anne, uh, Anne comes from a, a tech background. Um, uh, Anne and I have been having a lot of fun together uh, getting stuff done, and, and I think that will continue. Um, I was explaining to her how OGM operated with transparency and why that might be a good thing for a food sovereign. So a food sovereign has a choice to make, right? Um, as we have internal meetings, um, as we have, you know, uh, projects to do, um, where do we draw the line on making things public versus keeping things private, right? Um, and and it was an opportunity for a little bit. I've I've been working with some public stuff for a while, so I've I've learned a little to lean into the being public a little bit more. Um, we've done that to kind of together with OGM. Um, how can I explain to Anne what the accommodations are that you take to do that? Um, is it a good thing? Uh, do we like doing that? What have we learned? You know, what are the bad things? What are the things to watch out for? So that's uh, that discussion. Um, this one, I think we should defer to another another time. Um, but this was an idea I came up with for Jordan. Um, he was talking about a concept that needed to be not owned by anybody. Um, and yet, how do you make the website for something that, that's not owned by anybody? Because as soon as you make a website, obviously the person making the website owns it. Um, so uh, the, end, the, the short answer was hashtags. And I had some discussion around um, how to use hashtags that way. Um, uh, another thing that we could probably defer is, or maybe not actually, um, maybe this is the only thing that's important for this call. Um, uh, for a while in different contexts, I've been thinking it would be nice if we start um, explicitly making commitments and then explicitly trying to keep commitments. Um, Jordan, uh, Jordan and Lionsburg, sorry, uh, Jordan on the Lionsburg OGM call, uh, brought over some stuff from construction. Uh, they actually track a metric called uh, percentage of promises kept. Um, so if you've got a big multifaceted, if you're building a dam or overpass or something like that, you've got hundreds of people involved, dozens of organizations. And the, the way that you either make or break the project is by promising, you know, making commitments. Yes, I will get uh, cement trucks here at this time. Um, uh, or, you know, I'll, I'll have so many earth moving uh, equipment and the drivers for them or whatever, right? And the more that you keep promises to each other as you're doing a big project like that, the, the likelier you are to come in under time, under budget. And the, the more promises that get broken, the more likely you're, to, you know, you're going to blow out the thing. Um, so I've been wanting for a while to keep meeting metrics um, and to time box things like asking, so how long is this meeting going to last and, and can we commit to stopping it on time and, um, and uh, can we keep that promise? Um, meeting metrics for me a little bit comes out of um, the OGM meetings uh, where we, we don't have, observationally I feel like we don't have enough diversity. Um, so diversity to me is one metric to keep, um, and and uh, but another metric might be, um, did we end on time? Uh, did we keep good notes? Those kinds of things. So this is like the small small version of um, uh, OKRs. You know, um, can we can can we kind of take the concept of OKRs and make it fractal all the way down to each meeting even. Um, uh, and then uh, I had a, a discussion with Jerry. Uh, we've we've got a gap in our funding situation where we have conceptual funding models, um, and we're waiting to pour money in one end and distribute funds in another end. Um, some of those funds need to go to things that need to get done now, rather than in a month when the dollars actually pour into the bucket. Um, uh, for some of those things that need to get done, um, CSC Mattermost needing some improvements or some massive wiki uh, glue code or something like that, it would be nice to just get them done. Um, and then there are things that I want to do that I can't afford to do without 
promise of funding, but actually uh, I kind of realized promise of funding is almost good enough. I could probably take an o IOU from OGM or Lionsburg or something like that in lieu of payment. And then with the understanding that there's maybe an 80% chance that I'll, I'll get paid and maybe there's a 20% chance that I won't get paid. And then, you know, that the, the accuracy of the prediction of, of getting paid by an IOU goes back to things like commitments and, and metrics. Um, uh, I will let Jerry take this one, uh, the big quilt. Uh, thanks, Pete. And um, I, why don't I pause for a second because Klaus has got his hand up. Let's pause before this and see what questions we have so far and, and, and deal with this separately when we're, when we're a little further. Go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, Pete, uh, we, we had a discussion with uh, Jordan that involved Jordan yesterday and Samit and, and Anway in there. And the question came up that we urgently need uh, this website up because every time you talk with somebody, the question is, can you send me uh, an invite, or can you send me some information, right? And so we, the only thing we have right now is this hypothesis, and um, you know that that uh, has almost run its course. So, it, uh, do, is there a funding issue with uh, setting up this website? Uh, there is not. Um, well, no, there is not. Okay. Uh, so there be? <laughs> uh, uh, the. Uh, the timeline for setting up the website uh, is a function of me and Anne getting together uh, and starting around Thursday last week and doing things like deciding on a name and deciding on uh, where simple things like where and how to buy the domain name and the technical steps from turning a name into a domain name into websites that are up. So it's it's just... Uh, we had a weekend, um, you know, we, we worked over the weekend, uh, but I, I th it's not, um, there is, there aren't any blockers besides kind of just physical time. Okay, thanks. And, and the inputs to that, right? You know, uh, Ann and I had to talk about a bunch of domain name stuff and, and that includes things, not just the website, it includes things like how are we going to do email? How are we going to keep shared folders? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Klaus, are you done? Yeah, we, we talked about setting up our first regular meeting next Monday, starting next Monday, and wanted to focus on this marketing and messaging topic, you know, as a, as a first step. Um, I mean, I, I got an inquiry. I had a, a conversation with the uh, uh, education and leader from Kiss the Ground, the Kiss the Ground organization, you know, John Ulag is the founder of that group. Well, they want to get in on this. So, so they're already asking, uh, you know, can you send us information? Can we, we, we will send somebody to participate in the Monday meetings and so on. But his first question was, well, do you have a website or something you know, that we can send around? You know? yep. so, so this, yeah, thank you so much for, for you know, pushing that. Of course. Mr. Kennedy. Uh, one thing just really quickly, um, I mean, one thing I've done on projects previously uh, while waiting to put up a website is just to create a one-sheeter that you can share like a PDF or a, a single page file just with like the basics of what it should inform the website as well, but it is a kind of not the ideal in between, but it, it's a nice to have if people want more information, um, just a, as a suggestion. Uh, thanks, Phil. Uh, Jerry Quilts? Um, sure. And and this this may throw a tiny wrench in things, but um, I, I want to go into the quilt discussion in a second. But Pete, if you can drop the share, I just want to screen share for a sec. Sure thing. <clears throat> so um, two Sundays ago, I had a, one of many great conversations recently, which led me to the idea of having a show as like a mainstream of activity through OGM and that we would take kind of like the stream of calls we're doing, but actually perform OGM work on the calls. And on the surface, that was this would present as a vlog or a podcast. In fact, it could be a video log and have podcast outputs and other sorts of things. But underground, we would be taking the transcripts and analyzing them. I would be weaving with my brain. Other people would weave with other tools. We would be doing OGM -y kinds of things. And we would direct this thing toward the kinds of people who are trying to solve the world's problems. Uh, preferring to go to non-white guys ideas first. 
Um, so that's the broad idea of the show. And the, the name that came up for me was The Big Quilt. And we can have a conversation about why quilting is an interesting metaphor here. Uh, <clears throat> then the, ne the next day, Pete and I and Judy were on a call that Jordan was, was helping run for the One Degree Network. And at some point late in the call, after we'd sort of done some, some breakout work, uh, one of the leaders said, so what, how do you explain this to a, to a five-year-old? And I pulled out the quilt thing, which I thought, you know, which could come up the, the, next, the previous day. And I'm like, we're, we're weaving a quilt. And it's like, it just stuck. It was like, yep, sounds great. And we moved with it. So I'm really liking the quilt analogy and it seems like a simple thing. But the reason I'm asking this to share screen is um, yesterday uh, I bought the bigquilt.com on Google domains. They have now added a feature when you start a domain, do you, would you like to build this on Google sites? I said, yes. The old little tiny hack that I had to do to point the domain to the website is non-existent and unnecessary at this point. It just stands up and transparently builds your site. Uh, Google Sites looks like this. I actually have added an image back here I don't like, so I haven't published this. Um, and I can easily drop Google Spreadsheets, Google Docs, Google anything's in here. Um, and this is, I can also easily add, see the little people icon. I can add humans who have full edit privileges. This is, and, and the service costs $0. What I'm paying is $12 a year for the domain on Google Domains. So, and I, I can do this. Like this is, this is no challenge whatsoever to do. And I know that built like we have a we have a beginner website for Open Global Mind on Massive right now, which hasn't changed since we published it, and we don't really have a process or a thing to to do it. And I'm like, Pete, I don't know what to do because because this is so simple, and yet it's like Google, Google, Google stuff. Uh, but I got to say, this, this was like instantaneous to set up. It propagated pretty much immediately. All the DNS messy stuff was done for me. Like, and, and we can switch from this to, a, to a, a different site later, no problem. But this was just so simple. Sorry. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks for the walkthrough. Um, uh, I, I can talk pros and cons between Massive and, and uh, Google, uh, Google Sites. Um, I think Google Sites is fine. And Klaus, um, if, if you all wanted I, to have a, a name, we could you could buy a domain and set it up as quickly as I we, just did. We could yourself. do that. Uh, Anne or Anne and I, yeah. uh, or I, could set up a Google Sites uh, website. Oh, exactly. Um, you know, so within I'll, a couple just, hours. We can I'll do just, the same thing with Massive. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, I, well, um, the, the question is, in a month, you know, uh, I, I don't know. It, massive is about participation. Um, Google ends up to me being about enclosure, and so, um, and it's a trade-off, right? Um, and do you want uh, to and in? and also the the other thing that I need to say in there, or or want to say in there, I guess, is that uh, in conversation with Wendy Elford, we've already started. Uh, massive has already started being able to suck stuff out of Google Drive into a Massive, um, and a Massive Wiki and a website. Um, same thing with in conversation with Anne. It's going to be able to suck Google Docs um, into massive wikis and into websites. I don't want to stick on. I I don't care. Um, uh, let's do the thing that's most collaborative, the most open, the most scalable. If that's Google Sites, I'm fine with that. I don't think it is, but. So I I would the pen I would put in is and I and I've had this conversation with Pete. I don't know if I've had it with Klaus. Is I'm hearing from the the community I am plugged into in the farm space, the agricultural space, they are, uh, what's what I want? Uh, strong, very, very, very strong opinions with regard to large technology companies. Amazon always being the big target they shoot at, but Walmart's right behind them and Amazon's right behind them to the point that many organizations are saying, I wish I didn't have to be on AWS. I wish I didn't even have to use services that were on AWS. So when Pete and I had this conversation, there was a conscious, discussion around what are the technologies and platforms that while may not be perfect or at least aligned in spirit with that. So that was one of the reasons we chose Massive Wiki versus Google Sites. But in the end, I bought the domain through Google. So it's not a perfect world. Um, but that was a factor in our thinking, even in Google Sites, like I could have done it last night over a beer and we would have been done. But that was not aligned with the intention. And I totally agree with that. And I agree with what Pete said. And I think Pete knows that in spirit, I've been traveling the massive road now with him for, for this whole time. 
Um, but I feel like when we build anything in massive, Pete, it, it's like um, it's it's like the rook that's trapped between the queen and the king or something. I don't know. It, it's like Pete gets trapped because without Pete, I feel like I can't really actually do much with massive. I, I feel like you become a linchpin to anything I want to try to do. And that's that endangers our relationship. And then I can't figure out how to fill an IOU or how, like, like we go straight to the IOU conversation because I feel like uh, I, you know, uh, I'm waiting for you to build stuff that I can't pay for you to build. Um, I, so what massive needs or, or then I, so one easy choice is to say, yeah, so let's throw up our hands. Let's use this Google thing. It works great. Um, I'm fine with that decision. I don't have a problem with that. I think it's, it's missing the mark, but other than that, I'm fine. The, so if we don't want to choose that, if we want to choose the massive approach, then massive wiki needs help, right? Um, how do we make Pete not the linchpin? Already, uh, it would be pretty easy for you, Jerry, to just ping Bill and Bill can, you know, plow through a lot of the stuff I can plow through. Um, you mean Bill Anderson? Uh, Bill Anderson, yeah. Um, you know, but uh, massive wiki would love to have more more concierges, right? And it, there, uh, Bentley could do the same thing. Um, I don't know that he's got the interest necessarily, but um, the the skills to help somebody with um, uh, with massive are are pretty small and and very common and easily. I you know so it's uh it, it takes work to it takes work to use open source um you know it takes work to build open source um and if the open source stuff isn't working for you you can pull away and use something easier or you can lean in and make the open source stuff work better uh phil um sorry uh this is a great conversation. I, I don't want to be overly critical, uh, but I was very excited actually when I saw Pete's agenda for this meeting because I think there are some issues around commitments, time boxing, things like that that we do need to talk through. Uh, I, I find that a lot of times in these meetings we kind of have these these great emergent conversations, but then don't uh, address the initial subject matter. So I just wanted to call attention to to the agenda again, if possible, um, just to say um, thanks. Good. We're kind of on the agenda because this was on the, you know, this kind of conversation was on the agenda and nobody went back to the commitments thing when, when we paused before stepping into this, because I was looking for anybody who wanted to go back to things like, like commitments, which I'm happy to go back to. I, I just feel like we're not off the agenda right now. We're, we're, we're sort of, we're obeying that, I think. Um, I feel like, uh, so um, this has been a wonderful call. Thank you all. Um, I'm enjoying myself. Um, uh there's there's a i don't know there's uh a community discipline or something like that 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 we need to get better at um uh so i don't care too much i th i think we've kind of blown the agenda <laughs> i think we're not on the agenda very well which is totally fine um you know if i think the way that we developed the agenda it wasn't really collaborative i just threw up a bunch of stuff that i i know is important that we need to cover sometime um and i kind of thought uh uh interestingly enough uh i was a little bit inspired by um, an experience that ann and i had where i did kind of the same thing um with more precision on the numbers actually um and ann and i actually tracked the the agenda pretty well so partly that was we have a bunch of really important stuff that we needed to get through um, so we both drove to it together. Part of it was the, the fact that we only had two people instead of uh, six, seven. Um, uh, and and uh, kind of me too, um, the, the call rhythm and the, the team discipline that we have developed over the past year with the folks in this room is one where we uh, are drawn to emergence and I'm including myself in here too. We're drawn to emergence and we think that emergent topics are really important. And so we bubble those up, right? And we, we still haven't quite developed a discipline to say um, maybe a, a code word or something even, um, you know, this is one of those calls where, yeah, looks like we've got an agenda. We're going to just drive through that. Anything else is off topic. Let's, uh, you know, let's, um, uh, let's put it in the parking lot and keep going on the agenda, right? Because we wanted to be productive this call. Um, 
the, the process I'm used to for agendas and effective meetings is that a small subset of people in, a, in an organization like a nonprofit, it's usually the executive committee of the board of directors is responsible for affirming with the chair of the board the agenda. We don't have a designated individual, but I think if we could agree that we are going to do an agenda, first of all, whoever is going to put out an, a tentative agenda can ask for topics to put on the agenda that can be refined at the, in the first five minutes of the meeting. And it's basically, here's what we have on the agenda that we think we can do in this much time. Um, does anyone have something they feel is more important or needs to be inserted instead on the agenda? In which case you put it on the agenda and bump something else, but you're still practicing discipline around time. And you don't do the check-ins and the how are you doing this week stuff until after the meeting's over. I mean, that's the way you work the meeting and then everybody stays after. Or they come half an hour early before the meeting and mingle before they start the meeting, both of which would be options on Zoom if one wanted to do that. Um, we could say the meeting's at nine o'clock, but somebody will open the room for whomever wants to show up to mingle between 8.30 and nine, um, whatever. I mean, I'm just offering that as an option because I've seen that work pretty well in, in fairly disrupted boards and so forth because there's a shared understanding of what we need to do to have an effective meeting. I, I thank you, Judy. That makes a lot of sense. And, and of course you can kind of see the structure I've got there that, you know, it, it recalls that at least. Um, the, the difference that we have here is that OGM itself um, is kind of solving an emergent set of problems. Um, and, um, and it's my fault I brought up COVID, but um, working through that is one of, I would say that was on topic for OGM. Um, it wasn't on topic for the agenda, but it's not like we weren't being productive or doing important stuff. Um, so the difference is um, uh, in, a, in a company, one person or you know, a, a person's delegate or something like that is gonna say that's, that's inbounds, that's out of bounds. And you can keep shoving stuff out of bounds. None of the stuff that we talked about today is out of bounds for OGM, I think. I think we were pretty, pretty good at keeping the conversation going and keeping it productive and not rat, rabbit holing. So a, a, a big problem or a big challenge or a big actually uh, pleasure is that OGM itself doesn't have, you know, we, this call, this call doesn't have a charter. Um, you know, uh, OGM has a, a multi-charter um, uh, and we, we work on a lot of different things. So we don't have the ability to say, go for it, Jerry. This call, this call is meant to be our getting things done call with a goal of making OGM a working thing. That's why we renamed it Build OGM. So, so it, it doesn't have a written charter, you're totally right. But I think the intentions are meant to be much crisper and narrower and, and time boxed and like like I think our intentions for this call are actually like hit hit agenda items and get things done and go great awesome that felt really productive. So that's my I, I think, sense about I it. I think we need to be more explicit about that and and okay. um, if if that's what we want. Yeah, Stacy. Just one small point. As far as the agenda, if all the estimates went to the maximum, it would have been 85 minutes. I would just suggest that with all the maximum, it, it should add up to 60. Like looking at every agenda as if it took. The, um, if, if, you, if you, yeah. if you, uh, that's that's kind of my 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 note about precision. Um, it's an interesting. There's a whole set of questions that are interesting in my brain about that. So one of them, if if you'll notice, to be to be precise. Um, the, there isn't an agenda yet. Uh, the, the thing that I've got for that heading is topics. Um, topics are meant to be a set of things that we might talk about that get gardened into the agenda during the first five minutes in this, uh, this thing. Um, so, uh, so then also, um, I, I don't know, I could talk about the, the variation of the numbers. I would rather put a precise number there and then hit the numbers. Yes, I agree. Um, and I also agree, uh, the meeting, not only should it add up to 60, you actually have to add a little bit of slack time, right? Um, so each topic 
should cover you should cover like 50 minutes and then there should be five minutes for like jostling around or switching topics or or telling somebody or or asking somebody this sounds like a rabbit hole can we can we put that in the parking lot and pick it up later so i totally agree which also i think comes back a bit sort of recursively to say we might need to collaboratively develop agendas more because you had kindly in a burst of energy you had put up a quick agenda I said, that sounded great. I pinned mine to the end. Nobody else talked about it. And that's what we walked in with. So maybe we need to, maybe we need to have an asynchronous process to just chat through the agenda together before the, the calls more. Um, agreed. Yeah, I think a process would be good. I, I mean, when I first came in, I tried to listen to the recording of the previous call to pull out what wasn't discussed in the previous call. But even then, it kind of became emerging conversation. So I think some sort of formalized process in terms of topics, how we decide on which topics are included, um, and how people suggest topics would be, I think, helpful. And maybe we can outline that in our Mattermost chat. And last week was was very much a talk about the food systems project. So uh, most of our time was 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 in there, which was very fruitful. And I felt I felt was really actually like targeted and productive. Any other thoughts on this? We're at the top of the hour. Um, last thoughts on, on where we are. I would just say quickly, I didn't mean to be overly critical when, when calling out uh, the agenda. I just It's just a bit of a pattern, I thought. I think these conversations are very rich, very fruitful. Um, it was just something I think we could at least try to make a little um, more of an effort to be um, disciplined about. Um, and thanks to everyone for, for your input and for Pete's work on putting that together. Um, I think, uh, I think, uh, so, uh, so some of these uh, topics would be good fodder for uh, maybe next call, um, and and I I think actually another another reflection is um, I wouldn't want to see so many people. Uh, so I put my name after these as kind of like topic lead or something like that, or you know I was going to kick off the conversation, um, and then most of the time is actually hopefully conversation and, and taking notes and things like that, thinking and taking notes. Um, I think there are too many peats on this on this one. Um, I would rather see it much more balanced uh, for future agendas. Um, I also would love if we started thinking about meeting metrics. So was this, you know, uh, different kinds of essentially OKRs, right? Was this meeting productive? Um, uh, was it on topic? Uh, uh, did we enjoy ourselves? Um, was there friction? Did we productively address friction? You know, um, did we keep notes well? Did we, all of those kinds of things, I wish we were tracking better and, and being more conscious about. Yeah. Matt, um, I do apologize. I have to jump onto another call, but I will, I will just share um, an activity that I had in the nonprofit I was at last, which was quite good, is at the close of the meeting, um, not even the no discussion, you had the agreed upon sort of criteria and everybody just scored the call. Um, and we did it virtually, meaning everybody just entered their score on the note page and you had a record and you moved on. And then that was insight for the next time around. So I'm going to leave that little nugget before I jump off. Do you want to um, score the call? But yeah, I'm looking forward to joining more of these. Thanks. We don't, we don't have a scoreboard right now. Yeah, I actually, I actually think we covered uh, your agenda mostly. You know, I mean, a, I a lot of it, yes. yes. And so, but we, we, what we didn't do is, uh, is wrap it, right? Okay, so I got common English hashtags. I got, uh, uh, I'm using IOUs to bootstrap. You know, we talked about those things, and I think from my standpoint, I acknowledge. You know, this was, you know, this, this is how uh, this can work. What we didn't do is talk about the big quilt idea that Jerry has and, and flesh that out a little bit. Um, uh, we didn't, we, there's things we didn't flesh out about each of these. So there's more about hashtags that didn't get said that are important. Um, uh, we didn't cover transparency and accessibility for the food sovereign. Um, we don't have a, we don't have a, what I was hoping to go come out from this was something that Anne could say, okay, I get it about transparency and I get it about accessibility. Um, and there's things that OGM knows that the food sovereign needs to know um, and decide whether or not it wants the things that OGM. So we, I, I, I talked about each of these, we did not cover them, which, and I agree, we didn't talk about the big, the big quilt.
but we didn't talk about many of these things. More coming. I need to run this way to another right. call. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, and I want to drop because I want to be crisp. Okay. Thanks, all. Bye for now.